congratulations. You've rented a motorhome from Cruise America or Cruise Canada, North America's favorite RV rental companies. To ensure your adventure goes smoothly, we're going to show you how to safely operate these state-of-the-art vehicles and point out their unique features. When you pick up your vehicle, the first job is to review and sign the rental contract and any other required departure forms. The individual responsible for renting the motorhome must be present at time of vehicle pickup, be 21 years of age or older, possess a valid driver's license and major credit card. All other drivers must be present, be at least 21 years old and possess a valid driver's license. You'll receive a departure kit containing some useful items for your trip and a renter's assistance guide explaining how your motorhome works and containing other helpful resources and advice for you while you're on the road. If you booked a kitchen kit or a personal bedding and linen kit, these will be provided to you at time of departure. If you intend to tow anything with your RV, arrangements must be made before you depart. There is a locking pin that has to be removed by a technician in order for you to use the tow hitch. The tow hitch can also be fitted with a bike rack, adding a fun two-wheeled option to your journey. Before you depart, an agent will give you a very helpful inspection tour of your vehicle to go over some of the key features and verify that the RV is in good working order. Please pay careful attention as now is the time to ask any questions. Your home away from home is 12 feet or 3.7 meters tall. You've now got a second story to think about. Look up to check for low hanging trees or canopies and take extra care when negotiating tunnels or bridges. Your RV is also 10 feet or 3 meters across. That's a lot wider than what you drive at home. It's a good idea to use the wider truck lanes at toll booths to avoid any scrapes. The wing mirrors will fall flat in a tight squeeze, so take it slow and you should be fine. Your motorhome can be up to 30 feet or 9 meters long, so asking your co-driver to help when doing any type of manoeuvre is a good idea. Take a careful look at the outside of your home on wheels. Along with its oversized dimensions and unique shape, you'll notice some distinctive features. The main living area has its own entry door, with two locks for added security. The outside door can be fastened open using a stay that attaches to the side of the vehicle. And if the weather permits, there's a latch screen door to let the fresh air in and keep the bugs out. Most vehicles have several good-sized exterior storage compartments. Even though these can be locked, please keep valuables and non-waterproof items inside the RV. Some units have a folding picnic table which stores flat in the large compartment at the rear of the vehicle. There's even a handy light back there so you can see what you're doing. On the side of the motorhome you'll find the fresh water tank fill and the main water connection. There are also access panels for the generator, the electrical hookup, the propane tank, the auxiliary battery, and there are exhaust vents for the water heater and the furnace. You will notice the driver's cab is comfortable, air-conditioned and quiet. Automatic transmission keeps the ride smooth and there's also cruise control for longer trips. The driver's seat provides a good all-around view and gauges on the dash are easy to see. For your listening pleasure, there's an AM-FM radio, a CD player, 
and an input for an MP3 player. There's plenty of cup holders, lots of storage for maps and guidebooks, and power outlets for a phone charger or GPS. Your navigator has no excuse for getting lost. Filling up with gas is like any other vehicle. Before filling up, turn off the engine, the propane tank and all propane appliances. That's the refrigerator, the cooktop, the water heater and the furnace. Please use only unleaded gasoline, never use diesel. Take this opportunity to also check the oil. The dipstick is located on the driver's side. If oil is required, you will need to purchase 5W20 weight oil. Please check your tyres regularly as well. You'll find the recommended tyre pressure on the side wall of the tyre. In the event of a tyre problem, your motorhome is equipped with a full-size spare. You will not, however, find a jack, as we don't want you changing a tyre. You must call Traveller's Assistance, who will dispatch a technician to do the job quickly and safely. You'll find the toll-free telephone number in your Renter's Assistance Guide. You can spend up to $75 total on basic repairs or adding fluids, so please keep your receipts and we will reimburse you. However, if you're going to have to spend over $75 on any single vehicle-related item, you must call Traveller's Assistance for authorization. Driving the motorhome is not difficult if you follow some common sense guidelines. Drive defensively and pay extra attention to other large vehicles. Avoid sudden starts or stops. Take corners at a sensible speed. And stick to the posted speed limit. Remember, you have to pay your own tickets. Please use extra caution when changing lanes or turning. Remember, a motorhome does not turn like a car. The rear of the vehicle swings out as you turn, as this demonstration shows. To avoid any problems, watch for your rear wheels to clear whatever is alongside the vehicle and then make a gradual turn. Backing up a motorhome can be tricky, so always use someone to assist you. Proceed slowly, have the window down so you can hear instructions and use those big mirrors. To adjust your mirrors, twist the knob located by the driver's window until you have a clear view of what's behind you. As an additional precaution, sensors in the rear bumper will sound an alarm in the cab if you get within 4 feet or 1.3 meters of any object. If the engine won't start, there's an emergency start switch located to the left of the steering column. Simply press and hold the switch at the same time as you start the engine. This will provide you with extra power from the auxiliary battery. The brake has to be depressed in order to move the gear shift to either drive or reverse. The parking brake is foot operated. It's located to the left of the brake pedal. Always use it whenever you are parked. To disengage it, use the hand release. For mountainous driving conditions, select the tow haul option on the gear shift. The vehicle will then automatically slow down descending hills, so you don't have to ride the brakes. Most important though, have fun and enjoy the ride. The motorhome's main electrical connection is located in a compartment on the side of the RV a long black cable known as the shoreline. When you collect your RV, the shoreline will be plugged into the onboard receptacle that connects to the vehicle's generator. On the road, that is where it needs to be for your onboard electrical systems to work. At the campground though, the shoreline needs to be plugged into the power supply. Pull out sufficient cable to reach, unplug it from the vehicle, plug it in, and flip on the breaker. If the campsite receptacle is a smaller household type, 
use the 15 to 30 amp adapter provided. Make sure you have one of these before departing the rental centre. When departing the campground, switch off the breaker, unplug the shoreline, coil the cable inside the compartment, plug it back into the vehicle receptacle and close the hatch. 120 volt power from either the campground power supply or the generator is required to run the rooftop air conditioner, the microwave or to use the electrical outlets. The generator is switched on from the master control panel inside the living area. Before doing so, make sure the air conditioning unit is off to avoid a possible overload. Also, please make sure all windows, doors and roof vents are properly closed to prevent exhaust fumes from entering the motorhome's interior. When starting the generator, hold the switch down until the unit fires up. Let it run for a few moments before utilising it. If you switch the generator on and don't get interior power, check that the shoreline is securely plugged into that vehicle receptacle. It's an easy fix. Many campgrounds have quiet hours when a generator cannot be used, so please be considerate of your neighbours. And most important, never use the generator while you are sleeping. The generator uses gasoline from the motorhome's main tank. The tank must be at least one quarter full for it to operate. Used regularly, it will require some basic maintenance. Remove the access panel and using the dipstick, check the oil after every six hours of use. If necessary, add straight 30 weight oil. Aside from the generator or campground power supply, your motorhome also has an onboard auxiliary 12 volt battery designed to handle normal use of the lights, the water pump and limited use of the fan on the furnace. For extended use of the furnace or for the air conditioner, the microwave or the electrical outlets to work, the vehicle must be hooked up to the campground power supply or the generator must be running. The auxiliary battery can be charged in a couple of different ways. Running the engine for 20 minutes or so will provide a quick charge, while the shoreline or generator will provide a stronger charge. The converter panel located at floor level houses all the breakers and fuses for the electrical system and is easily accessed by opening the cover. If a problem is experienced, a breaker may just need resetting. Using your renter's assistance guide for reference, simply flip it all the way off, then back on again. There's also a reset here for the 12 volt system run by the auxiliary battery. Individual fuses, if blown, may simply need replacing. Your RV has an onboard water tank for when you're not connected to the campground water supply. Remove the cap and fill up using the water hose provided. Don't fill up too quickly as the tank needs to vent and remember to replace the cap when you're done. The electric water pump will need to be switched on inside the vehicle for the onboard water system to operate. When connected to the campsite water supply, the pump is not needed and must be turned off. Remember, your onboard water supply is not for drinking. Please use bottled water when cooking or if you're thirsty. Next to the freshwater tank fill is the main water connection you use when you're able to connect to a permanent water supply. Carefully screw on the water hose to the vehicle and screw the other end to the water outlet. Be careful of the water pressure, a quarter turn is all you need. The onboard shower operates very much like the one at home. Turn on the water heater in advance, then turn on the faucet and enjoy. Use it sparingly though. Many campgrounds have great showers, so save your onboard shower and your water for when there are none available. The onboard toilet also looks as you would expect. Simply depress the foot pedal momentarily for a quick flush, or hold the pedal down for a longer flush. 
we recommend you flush RV approved toilet chemicals down the toilet after each time you empty the holding tanks. RV toilet chemicals are readily available at most campgrounds or campground supply stores. Getting wastewater and sewage out of the RV is simple enough. The key to this is correctly operating the two large valves on the side of the vehicle. It's very important both valves are closed and the termination cap is secure before you leave the rental centre. The hose used for dumping the wastewater and sewage tanks is stored in a compartment above the main valves. Take it out of its compartment, remove the termination cap and attach it to the vehicle with a simple turn to the right. Then ensuring there are no kinks in the hose, insert it about 6 inches into the drain. If you ever have a problem with the sewer hose, please purchase another and keep your receipt. While hooked up on site, leave both valves closed. A slight buildup of pressure will help remove any solids. Dumping the holding tanks is very straightforward. First, open the bigger valve to empty the toilet holding tank. It will take a few moments. Once the flow has stopped, close the valve securely. Next, open the smaller valve to empty the holding tank for the shower and the sinks. This effectively rinses out the sewer hose. Again, when the flow stops, close the valve securely. When you're ready to depart, simply disconnect, rinse and stow the hose. Then replace the termination cap to reseal the wastewater system. You're ready to go. Most campsites without sewer hookups have a dump station for your convenience. Simply pull alongside the sewer connection, deploy the hose and follow the procedure we just outlined. There, that wasn't so bad now, was it? Your motorhome has an exterior propane tank to run several of the onboard appliances. Propane is widely available, with Philips being done by an attendant who will have you turn off those appliances before proceeding. Next to the filler valve you'll find the propane shut-off valve, which must be turned clockwise to the off position when adding propane or gasoline to the vehicle. When filled, the propane tank may only register three quarters full. This is completely normal. There's also an electronic propane gauge inside the RV for your convenience. As you would expect, the exhaust vents on the outside of the vehicle for the water heater and the furnace get very hot when in operation. There's no reason for you to touch these, so please don't. The propane cooktop is easy to use and operates like a barbecue grill. Turn a burner to light, then use the igniter switch. It has an exhaust hood and fan, as well as a light to cook by. The microwave requires the shoreline to be connected to the campground power supply or the generator to operate. As always, please use microwave safe dishware. The fridge freezer does not operate like the one you have at home, as it can run on propane, the generator or the shoreline connected to the campground power supply. Switch it on and choose the auto setting so the unit will automatically select the appropriate power source. Remember the motorhome has to be on level ground for the fridge freezer to operate properly. Try to minimise the number of times you open the door as it can take several minutes to re-chill. A cheap cooler for cold drinks is a good idea so you're not constantly opening the fridge. The thermostat for the fridge is actually inside the main compartment if you wish to adjust the temperature. Follow these simple rules and you'll be fine. The cleverly designed living quarters are where you'll spend a lot of your time. The dinette easily seats four people when dining or just taking it easy. It's equipped with seat belts, so it's a safe place for kids to hang out when the vehicle is in motion. There's also a comfortable couch to relax on, or on some models a bench seat. 
The kitchen area is modern, well equipped and has ample storage space. There's a convenient microwave, an easy to clean cooktop, kitchen sink with faucet and a fridge freezer. All the comforts of home on the road. The master control panel instantly tells you the propane level, available battery power and the level of waste water and sewage on board. The on-off switch for the generator is here and the on-off switch for the electric water pump. The roof-mounted air conditioner is powered either by the generator or when the shoreline is connected to the campground power supply. The easy-to-use thermostat will keep you comfortable. Simply select the mode and the temperature you desire. The RV also has large sliding windows with screens and roof vents that can be cranked open to let in a cool breeze. Please make sure all roof vents are closed before driving anywhere. If you need heat, select the furnace option on the thermostat and set to a comfortable temperature. You have to be connected to the campground power supply to run the furnace for an extended period such as overnight. If you run the furnace off the auxiliary battery, it may only last for a couple of hours. There are electrical outlets throughout the motorhome. These only operate when the generator is running or the RV is connected to the campground power supply. You'll find eco-friendly LED lighting throughout the motorhome. It provides great illumination and runs off the auxiliary battery. Your living quarters has lots of easily accessed storage for dinnerware, cooking utensils, food, clothing and personal effects. Get used to storing breakable items where they won't move or rattle when the vehicle is in motion. We want you to be comfortable as you travel around, so hopefully these few small reminders will make a big difference to life on the road. The sleeping arrangements are cleverly designed to maximise available space. The dinette, for example, also doubles as a bed. After taking off the cushions, raise the table and remove and store the pedestal. Then lower the table down onto the support rails. Replace the cushions and you're all set. Some units are equipped with a couch that folds flat into an additional bed. The over-the-cab sleeping area is very spacious, needs no assembly and is accessed by stepping up on the back of the bench seat behind the driver. With the exception of smaller vehicles, your RV is also equipped with a rear bedroom area. None of the beds should ever be used while the vehicle is in motion. Everyone needs to be seated with their seat belts fastened. Anyway, there's way too much to see to be taking a nap. While we want you to have fun, ultimately your safety comes first. Please remember these simple guidelines. Never use the motorhome's engine for heat while you are sleeping, or the burners on the cooktop. The motorhome has a carbon monoxide and propane gas detector, which should be checked daily. It's very sensitive, so might go off due to air freshener or perfume. If this occurs, it should automatically shut off after a few moments. If it continues to sound, please turn the propane off and call Traveller's Assistance. The main living area also has a smoke detector, which should also be checked daily. There's a spare 9 volt battery in your departure kit. At the top of the stairwell by the main door, you'll also find a fire extinguisher. And at the rear of the vehicle, is an emergency exit. Simply raise both the locking handles and push the window outwards. The LED floor lighting is provided for your convenience and safety. Your RV is also equipped with an exterior porch light in case you need to go outside. Stay safe so you can come back and see us again. When you make camp, be sure your motorhome is on level ground to ensure the propane appliances work correctly. 
It's also a good idea to have the campsite picnic table on the side of the RV with the door. Please don't park too close to the fire pit. The marshmallows are the only things we want to roast. Make sure the electrical shoreline easily reaches the campground power supply, the water hose reaches the campground water supply, and that the sewer hose comfortably reaches the drain for a watertight seal. Please take care to disconnect all these hookups before you leave the campsite, or your departure could come to an abrupt halt. Store all connectors and hoses back in their compartments, and then you're ready for your next destination. Well, that's all the information you need for now. It will soon be time for you to hit the road. For a more detailed explanation of all the topics covered in this video, please take the time to carefully read through your Renters Assistance Guide. On behalf of everyone at Cruise America and Cruise Canada, thanks for your attention. Please drive safely and enjoy the road.